Hello Minecrafters, King James here, broadcasting from the Feed the Beast Ultimate server for Zealdcraft. We're currently a whitelist server, but we're looking to whitelist just about anybody right now in preparation for going public. Go ahead and click that link at the bottom of this page in the description and check out our website. We'd be more than happy to have you. Now, right now I have my Bealizer out. You should go ahead and make your Bealizer as soon as possible if you're going to do bees. It's really easy to make and you make it in a carpenter. Just go ahead and check out any eye in order to figure that recipe out. Now, I have a modest princess here. This princess just came from a hive. I haven't crossed it with anything. Uh, right here you can see it's got zero generations in captivity, which means I just got it out of a hive. However, I did use an extra bees machine called an inoculator with a rock pollination serum in order to put rock pollination on here just to demonstrate how dominant and recessive traits work. I'll get into how to operate your extra bees machines in another tutorial later on. But for now, just know that red traits are dominant and blue traits are recessive. Now for example, for our example, we're going to focus on the flowers trait. Flowers are what the bee needs in order to produce combs, and if you don't have any of the flowers demanded by the bee nearby, the bee's life won't go down, so you won't be able to breed your bees. Now, rock pollination is red, which means that it's dominant, which means that if you have the rock pollination on any of your bees, it's always going to be in the active slot. Rock will never be in the inactive slot unless you have a pure rock bee, in which it would be rock active and rock inactive. Now, we're going to get into Punnett squares in a little bit, and I'll help you guys understand how this works. Uh, a little bit better, but I'm going to try to explain it right now without much of a visual aid. If you were to cross this rock bee with a bee that wanted cactus and cactus, you would have a greater chance of getting bees that want rocks rather than cactus because rock is always going to be active. The active and the inactive trait is determined randomly However, there is a mechanic to determine which traits will be passed on, and that's called a Punnett square, and it's used with Mendelian genetics, which are a thing in real life used to determine the traits that parents, or in this case, a drone and a princess, will pass on to their offspring. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at Punnett squares. This is a Punnett square. It's very simple, and I'm going to make this as easy and as understandable as I possibly can. If you guys have any questions, or you think I need to clarify something, or you just have some criticism, and I can take any kind of criticism, just go ahead and leave a comment in my comment section, and I'm definitely going to be looking over those. This is only my third video, and I'd be more than happy to take into consideration whatever you guys have to say. Now, all you do for this is we're going to take our rock cactus bee and we're going to cross it with a regular old uh, modest drone. Now, drones don't have to go on the left. Princesses don't have to go on the top. It doesn't matter. Active doesn't have to go on the left. Inactive doesn't have to go on the right. Uh, inactive and drones and princesses really have no bearing on your offspring the traits have an equal chance of being passed on and I'll show you how that works all you do is you drag them down it's really simple now each of these boxes represents 25 percent so let's say for example that you have maximum fertility on your bee well this means that you'll get one princess and four drones let's focus on the drones one of your drones most likely, now this is a 25% chance, but it's not set in stone. There's a chance for you to get all cactus cactus bees. It's just not very likely. Most likely, you'll get two rock cactus bees and two cactus cactus bees. Now what this means is that you have a 50% chance of getting bees that will want rocks for pollination and 50% that will want cactus for pollination. Uh, this is because rock is always active. It, let's say, for example, that rock wasn't dominant, that both cactus and rock are recessive. 
there's a random chance for the inactive and active trait to be determined. What this means is that you could have cactus on uh, your active and rock on your inactive. So your B would still have the rock trait, it just wouldn't be displayed. I, I really hope that that makes sense for you guys. Uh, I can think of no other way to word it. Now we're going to get into crossing hybrids because when you're doing bees you're gonna get a lot of hybrids when you start out and I'm also gonna focus on mutation. When you cross certain species for example common and cultivated there's a chance for them to mutate. The chance is based on the species. In this case common and cultivated have a 12 percent chance no, I'm, I'm sorry, it's a 10% chance to mutate into diligent and 10% chance to mutate into noble. That's a total 20% chance mutation rate. If you were to cross a meadows with a forest drone, there's a 15% mutation rate. So let's go ahead and do that. Meadows and forest. Now there are no species that are dominant or recessive, so we don't have to worry about that and like I said active and inactive are random so what we're gonna get is four meadows forest or forest meadows the only difference between active and inactive pertaining to species is that the bee will produce the uh, active species products for example if you had a majestic imperial hybrid you would not produce royal jelly because majestic is active on the bee. However, if you had an imperial majestic hybrid, you would produce royal jelly because you have imperial as the active trait. It really doesn't matter. Uh, active and inactive have no bearing on mutation. They just determine the products of the bees. So you have a 100% chance that all of your bees will be forest meadows or meadows forest hybrids of some sort. You could end up with four forest meadows or four meadows forest if you have them for fertility on there. Uh, it, it's random but all of them will be the hybrids. However, you've got the 15% mutation chance that you need to factor in. This means that because all of them are going to be crossed, forest meadows, you've got a total chance of 15% for one of your bees to mutate. Now, the mutation only applies to one of the species traits. Each bee has two species traits, active and inactive. So, what you'll end up with is a 15% chance to get common forest, or meadows common, or vice versa with active and inactive. Now you do have a very small chance of getting a pure common bee when you do this cross. I'm going to explain how that works. You've got a 15% chance per, per species trait. 100% is represented by 1, so that means that 15% is 0.15. That's a 15% chance for one of your species traits to mutate into common and then a 15% chance for the other one to mutate into common. So we'll multiply that by 0.15 and you end up with a 2.25% chance it's very low to get a common common B. I, I hope that you guys followed this. If you're having trouble with these concepts I suggest watching this tutorial again or I'll try to find another tutorial on Punnett squares that doesn't necessarily focus on forestry bees so that you guys can have a better time understanding this. Now we're going to take a look at how a hybrid cross would work. Let's say for example that you have a noble cultivated drone and a common cultivated princess. We're going to represent common with an O and it doesn't matter if the noble cultivated is the princess and the common cultivated is the drone. So we just drag this down cultivated cultivated has no mutation chance cultivated common has a 10% chance to turn into noble 10% chance to turn into diligent 
Noble Common has no mutation, and Noble Cultivated, I believe it's an 8% chance to turn into a Majestic. So I'm going to use a metaphor to better help you guys understand this. We'll focus on Noble Cultivated. Each of these boxes represents 25%, so you've got a 25% chance for one of your bees to end up with Noble Cultivated. So let's say, for example, there's a lottery, and you have one ticket, and there's a total of four tickets. You have a 25% chance of winning. And let's say that if you win that lottery, you go on to a bigger lottery. And that bigger lottery, there's 100 tickets, but you have eight of them. That means that you have an 8% chance of winning the bigger lottery, but you have to win the smaller one first. How we determine that chance to win the overall prize is we take 25% times 8%, which would be 2%. So you have a 2% chance of winning that big grand prize, or in this case, getting your noble cultivated to mutate into majestic. Now, if you want to factor in the 8% chance applies to both species traits, all you do is multiply this 2% by 8% again. And actually I did that math wrong. It would be 0 0.25 times 0 0.08, which is 2% times 0.08 which is less than a 1% chance. It's a 0.16% chance of getting a pure majestic princess or drone which is a very small chance. You will most likely not get one. If you do I would love to see it. So that's how mutation works. Now we'll take a look at cultivated common. Again you have a 1 in 4 chance or a 25 percent chance of getting cultivated common. And then once you do that you've got a 10 percent chance of getting diligent, which means you have a 2.5 percent chance of getting diligent and because it's 10 percent again you have a 2.5 percent chance of getting noble. So you have a total 5 percent chance of mutating into one of the branches. And then to see if you can get the pure bread, you just multiply by 10% again. It's a 1% chance of getting pure noble or pure diligent. So that's how hybrids and mutations work when you're crossing hybrids. I really hope that this information will help you optimize your crosses. Again, this is King James broadcasting from the Feed the Beast Ultimate Zealdcraft server. Go ahead and check out our whitelists on the link at the bottom of this page. And I really hope that my information helped you guys and that you'll be able to do bees a lot better. I suggest if you're just starting out with bees to go watch some of my other videos. Uh, this is the only one that I'm going to use to really focus on mechanics. The other ones are just going to be uh, displaying the bees and they're just going to be helping to guide you in what you'll need to do to get your ruby bees to make massive amounts of chrome for that fusion reactor or whatever you want to do. So good luck with your bees guys.